internet, and welcome to another episode of 80-Bit Pod Smash, where gaming goes to grab a beer. We are your weekly video game podcast, smashing ideas like culture, politics, art, and pop culture. Things, you things. that you love. We're your hosts, Penguin and Termite, and we are drinking... Ah, we are drinking Sam Adams Porch Rocker. Tart and refreshing. Yeah, it's very lemony. It I is. really like it. Although I think I liked it more when we were drinking it outside on like heat. ninety-eight degree weather. Yeah, on your back porch. Yeah, or not? Well, your backyard. Well, mm. doing stuff like it tastes. It's fine. It's just as you may be able to hear in the background. It's like a stormy evening. Evening. We we did not anticipate it being. A thunderstormy evening tonight, so... Um, if, if you're in your car and you hear some thunder rumbling, it's not your it's car. It's not your car. Or it's the us. traffic, it's us. Yeah. Um, so hopefully the, our mic doesn't pick up too much of it, but if it does, we apologize for any ambient noise that you might be hearing. But yes, this beer, it's very, very lemony. Like, I like yeah. it. It's got very... It's almost like a like a beer sour... Like, Sour beer. Right. It's almost like a sour beer, but it doesn't taste like a sour beer. It's no. not trying to be like a sour. It's just... It's got like a very sour... Mm-hmm flavor to it it's like an ale cool. with just like a sour side notes yeah like the sides mm-hmm. of your tongue just yeah. get that little tingly feeling mm-hmm. it's almost like drinking like a lemon bar like a like you know those without little, the sugar without yeah without the sugar yeah. it's like mm-hmm. beer and lemon bar right. uh, <laughs> it's good i'm not usually good. a huge fan of sam adams stuff what's the beer but... that has a long l name like lugenschlager oh, uh, or, i don't know the they have a lemon beer. Line and Kugel. That's it. They have a yeah. terrible lemon beer. Ah, uh, okay. This is infinitely better. Mm-hmm. I like it. It's good. It's good. How is your week? Oh uh, wow. Well, I'm, I guess to date myself, I will uh, when this when this episode launches, I will have just gotten back from San Diego, Woo-woo! California. So I've been out there for a week. We're gonna record an episode while I'm out there. So mm-hmm. you'll the hear next from one. me there. The yep. next one will be. So I'm just gearing up for that. I'm mm-hmm. gonna leave my family for 11 days or so, and hopefully I'll come home early. So that's what's been on my plate lately. It's been on your brain. Yeah, been in your brain space. Yep. Cool. Yeah. How about you? Oh man, this weekend for me was a basket of emotions for like oh, yeah. the stupidest reason. I mean, mm-hmm. for not stupidest because I still think it's it's good. But the aforementioned last week I mentioned I was almost done with a book, the book series that we have mentioned a couple of occasions, Stormlight Archive. I finished it. This past weekend, and uh, it was so good, and there was so many, I was like, there were parts where I wanted to cheer, there were parts where I wanted to just rage, there were parts that I wanted to cry, like, I was just, I think I went to, uh, I went to something after finishing it, and that was just, I think it was your your cookout, or the cookout yeah. for, our, we had some friends who had a baby shower, and instead of, like, a typical baby shower, it was a cookout, mm-hmm. so I went to that, and I was just like, I don't know how to feel, um, but it, <laughs> But it's good. It was just it's just a really good book. Um, so today was a little rough though because we're sh- we're short staffed. Some we had a coworker resign from our team, which mm-hmm. is fine. Like she resigned on good terms, so it wasn't like dramatic. But we're already short staffed, and then like I had a coworker take off today, and Mondays are just already busy. Like usually we have yeah. something that broke over the weekend, so it's usually just really busy. So I, I took a lot of calls first thing this morning. It was just like nonstop calls. And, like, I had someone come in at, like, 7.38-ish mm. and, like, help, but it was just still just felt like I just, I feel, I feel very beaten down right now. I did not do as much preparation for this episode as I would normally have wanted to, but that's fine. I'm here. I'm here, and I'm recording. And you're passionate. And I'm passionate. And you're ready to go. <laughs> and I'm ready to go. Speaking of the Stormlight Archives, I am very, very close to the first book. Yes. Finishing. I'm very close to the end. Gosh, you're so far behind. I, don't worry about it. <laughs> So I bought the second book for my flight uh-huh. and trip. Mm-hmm. So I'll have lots to read. Yes, I'm looking forward to your mm-hmm. reading. I've also been trying to figure out which video games I'm going to play on the plane and around. So I'm bringing my PlayStation 3. And I have mm. a copy of Dishonored, which is an entirely new, to me, franchise. Yeah, it, there's like great three things of, about it. Yeah. yeah, so I'm like dying to, to get Tell me how it something is, cause... completely new. It's just t- different. Like mm-hmm. I don't, I'm, I'm excited about it. I got it for like three bucks at GameStop. So I'm going to bring that. Um, I'm going to bring Killzone 2, which I've never played before, and it was okay. an early, early PS3 the PS3 title that I, I'm going to go back and made by Guerrilla Games, who made Horizon Zero Dawn. Nice. Uh, and then I'm going to bring Red Dead Redemption. Cool. Because I'm dying to play it after watching Westworld. Nice. And, and leading up to the hype of the second. Yeah. So that's also in my brain, gaming-wise. God of War is amazing. <laughs> it continues to be absolutely incredible. I guess we can talk about that. Like, yeah, we're talking playing. about like, yeah. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. Let's Shall do we? some housekeeping. So, yes. 
one week from today, we'll be in the thick of, in the middle of E3. I'm so excited. And E3 is the Christmas of video games. It is the Electronic Entertainment Expo. It is in LA, California, and is where every major publisher, developer, and video game industry head coll- like colludes on each other to announce and hype up all of the games that are coming out over the next year. Yeah, I'll try to give some comparisons. E3 is like Comic-Con, but for video games. Yes. And if you're not a nerd at all... It's like the Super Bowl for video games. Yep. It's like the biggest entertainment event in the industry. Yeah. Everyone announces everything good yeah. and big and crazy, well, and then the gamers get Not all... everyone. Like, Blizzard has their own... They have a BlizzCon. They have BlizzCon yeah. and stuff like that. I mean, there are some there are some studios that have their own that they save for their own things, but it, it really is, as far as, like, the big major players, the, the major developers, and the major um, hardware, hardware developers as well, mm-hmm. yep. they, they save all their... So we hope you guys are excited about E3 and you already know what it is and you're telling us to move on because you have you know what it is. You're aware of it. And so we are going to lay out for you guys how you can follow us during E3 and, and, ex- and set the expectations for what we're going to provide you guys for content. Yeah, exactly. Because so, we're going to want to talk a lot. We are. Uh, well, we also can't talk about absolutely everything because we right. have nine to fives and, and families. we're neither going to, you know, you know, our podcast isn't a like a gaming news podcast. Right. So we're going to... We're going to hit the highlights, the things we're excited about, mm-hmm. um, and maybe we'll talk about some of the things that are crazy, especially if anything crazy happens, like any developers make stupid moves, you know what I yeah. mean? Like, we'll have to talk about the, the major kind of highlights and, and lowlights um, of the of the entire thing, but uh, yeah, but again, okay. as so we've are... said before, we're not, a, we're not a gaming news podcast, right. so, but we still want to try to like be in it. I'll have our finger on the pulse of the conversation, yeah. if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cool. And uh, so there'll be seven major conferences, if you will, mm-hmm. uh, press conferences uh, from Electronic Arts, Microsoft, Bethesda, Square Enix, Ubisoft, Sony, and Nintendo. Mm-hmm. So Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo are the big three, the hardware makers. Yep. Everybody else is like the third party stuff where games still get announced. So we, Termite and Penguin, will live tweet the Sony conference at 9 p.m on monday june 11th okay yep we're gonna mm-hmm. live tweet that event we're super excited about sony they're like our favorite outside of nintendo because everyone knows with nintendo however nintendo is at noon on a tuesday yeah so, so we're not gonna we're we'll not be gonna... be at work so we're, we we love our podcast but as of yet we aren't going to take a day off just to live tweet nintendo's, right. nintendo's pre-recorded thing so we will still talk about nintendo's highlights but the one that mm-hmm. we can afford to live tweet is the sony, the sony one, conference yep. so we're gonna do that expect reddit posts or reddit threads to be created for all of them so mm-hmm. i listed seven of their conferences we're, we're gonna have reddit posts for all of them you can interact with us there yeah uh, so we'll random... save discussions for each one so we'll try to consolidate all this so we're not all just talking about all the e3 things we'll talk we'll have a different post for each yep so we'll you know you can talk about the square enix announcements and the square enix one you can talk mm-hmm. about the nintendo ones and the nintendo one so yep. that's the plan uh then... we'll do a uh, postpartum bonus recap live up not live episode uh we'll do this uh we'll do like a bonus episode the like the weekend after so it should go live the weekend after Mm -hmm. so we'll record we'll kind of do a major sum up of the major you know major things and we'll put it on the recording for those of you who don't want to follow follow the reddit discussions Mm -hmm. e3 ends tuesday june 12th so sometime between tuesday and the end of the week we will have our bonus content episode hit where we'll just kind of hit all of it. Yep. Mm-hmm. And we'll talk about our favorite things. Awesome. And then uh, just in general, keep an eye on social media for us. Uh, and then if you have thoughts too, if you're watching it and you, we haven't hit on something or you want to reiterate something we did hit on, then feel free to add us. You guys know where to find us on social media. So pay very close attention to those accounts on uh, the week of E3. So those oh social media accounts are Instagram at 80 Smash, Twitter at 80 Smash, Facebook at 80 Smash, and... Um, Reddit, that's it the subreddit well the subreddit at 80 bits pods and yeah so mm-hmm. uh yeah keep a keep a weather eye on the horizon um because that's all happening this week and it's gonna be awesome yeah i can't wait sweet mm. well, that actually normally we would do favorite things here but i think that transition is us uh, quite nicely into our dlc since we're already yeah. talking about it so we can't deprive our listeners of our favorite things we'll do so it well. afterwards though Ooh, yeah that's what i'm do. saying we're gonna we're reverse gonna... the order bah, 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 bah. DLC <laughs> downloadable content for those of you who are unfamiliar is our uh, first well it's one of our segments of our podcast we do a sort of sub discussion a mini discussion that may or may not have anything to do with our main topic but it's just sort of like a more fun usually it's more fun more interesting a game or a bit yeah if you will. more of a gamey 
kind of discussion. So, uh, the, since we were just talking about E3, and E3's happening, it's on our heads, let's talk about our predictions! Predictions! Uh, predictions and just musings, because, yes. like, I, I don't, I could go on an entire episode about what I think the industry might do or the reasons why they should say these things, but that would put everyone here to sleep, I imagine. <laughs> yeah. uh, if you want to hear those things, reach out to me and we will have an awesome conversation somewhere else on social media. I would love to talk about that. So I'm just going to say some of the things I'm excited about. The obvious elephant in the room of our excitement is Smash Brothers! Oh yeah, that one. I was... <laughs> There's a <laughs> lot, actually. Well, that's three! <laughs> oh, right. That, that's probably our second favorite. I don't know. For We can rank ourselves. It doesn't matter, but yes. Yeah. Smash Bros. is going to be Smash Bros. is huge, no. A giant tournament. Nintendo's going to be playing it there. Tons of content. Tons of live coverage. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, we are... I, I am most excited to see just... I know we won't get the full roster, but I'm excited for, like, any confirmation. Because right yeah. now, the only three characters we know for sure are in it mm-hmm. are Zelda. Zelda? <laughs> Gosh, I'm the worst. Link and uh, wow. Link from Zelda. Mario. <laughs> and Mario and from Squid Mario. Kid. And the Squid Kids, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, other than that, there's been extrapolations. There's been people like, oh, I think this person's going to be in it. Or I think these yeah, characters are going to be in it. They freeze-framed the, the, yeah. the footage and, like, outlined the shadow silhouettes of all the possible characters. Right. And tried to, it's nuts. Yeah, I know. Yeah, there's lots of speculation. And, of course, there's lots of good educated guesses, such as, like, we're pretty sure there's going to be, you know, Captain Falcon and Bowser and Kirby. Yeah. Like, there's a list of characters that we're, sh- we're pretty confident are going to be in it. But um, still, the original roster of characters was, what, 10 characters in the original Smash Bros? And then it went up to, like, 20, 30 in Melee, and then 50, and I think there was 53 or 54 in Smash Bros for Wii U. I don't know. I don't know. It was, like, so, like, they they go up, like, a significant margin each game. And then more third-party stuff kind of gets rolled in each time. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. So um, I'm hoping that we'll have a really interesting roster, but I would just be happy with any other confirmations, like, at this point. Mm -hmm. Um, Just to see some of their movesets, how they change. Like, I'm really hoping a lot of that comes out this year. Yeah. Yeah. And then you said Borderlands 3. So Gearbox has to show off that. It's published by 2K Games, so Mm -hmm. they should be there. Yeah, it's gonna happen. Yeah, we're 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 pretty. I mean, we're pretty confident that it's happening. Nothing has officially been announced, right. but it would be. I mean, what else could they possibly? Yeah, be doing? They've already announced that they're making. Yeah, it. yeah. They said they're working on Borderlands. Oh, 3. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. It's just whether or not it's going to mm-hmm. be at E three is the question. I mean, the I mean the you know we could say oh Borderlands three, but like what do you want from Borderlands three? Like what are you hoping? I we're, think we've talked about this before, but like you can go back and play Borderlands two in the pre sequel on PS four and Xbox One now. And if you do, there's a datedness that yep. feel to it that it's kind of hard to describe. But mechanically, there's like it just feels old, right? And it's it's in it's kind of interwoven throughout the whole thing. The way the menus are laid out, the way yeah. the character development is, the way the quest lines are, how multiplayer works, and jumping in and out of parties, yeah. and like all that stuff, it just feels antiquated for a lot of different reasons. Again, mm. we could have a whole episode about that. Uh, but I hope that there's a lot of quality of life improvements with yep. 3 that I'm really excited about. I hope they keep the art style mm-hmm. with the better graphics and mm-hmm. the, the, the better horsepower. They could make it look prettier. Yeah. And so, yeah, I'm looking for quality of life improvements and a graphical improvement. Mm-hmm. But I hope that's all they change because Borderlands is so yeah. good. Yeah. Oh, I I'm I personally would be happy to see some um, some more robust multiplayer elements including multiplayer specifically multiplayer player versus environment kinds of things so i would like to see kind of some some kind of more in-depth dungeons with bosses that have mechanics you know what okay. i mean yeah. that you have to like you have to so it's not just, it's not just like shoot 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 bang 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 like run 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 you know what i mean like yeah. you're not just like i want to see some actual strategies you have to employ i want to see roles like you should have a, you know someone with a heat you know something kind of healing and not necessarily tanking but you know what i mean like yeah. someone who can like Oh, I'm throwing out shields to the party, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. to protect for this big mechanic coming up. So, and yeah, I mean, ultimately, I would like to see the full cul- culmination of that being, I'd like to see some form of raids. Like, they don't have to be as, like, pain in the butt to deal with as Destiny. In fact, they shouldn't be more than, I don't think they should be more than four player. Right. Four player groups. Yeah, there's actually a lot they could grab from Destiny. That, yeah. That's good to add, to weave into the. Yeah, even like the sliding formula. mechanics and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Like, those are fun. Like, yeah. I think some of the, some of those, like, movement, I would like to see more, you know, Destiny had a pretty good, like, oh, you know depending on your class the characters jump in a different way like i'd love to see some of that woven into yeah. the classes that they introduce in borderlands That'd be sweet. three so that would be really cool cool the the only other thing that i'm thinking about the one things or one of the other major e3 things i'm looking looking at is um kind of like with a very critical eye 
I'm paying very close attention to what E3 does this year because EA. or e- EA <laughs> Electronic Arts EA at E3 yes. yes EA Electronic Arts the developer or the publisher they they've had a rough year yep. they've 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 had some really bad press this year just like one thing after another the gaming culture does not trust EA as far as they can throw them um, but they're still huge they're not going anywhere right so um, but I do think this is a very important this will be mm-hmm. a very important conference for EA because they'll have to. They have to kind of win back the trust. Yeah. And hopefully they do that with Anthem. Anthem. Yeah, so that's the wait. one game that they're releasing. It's being produced by Bioware, who did mm-hmm. the Mass Effect games and... A bunch of stuff. A bunch of stuff. Uh, Dragon Age? Dragon Age? Uh-huh. Dragon Age, yeah. and they did uh, Knights of the Republic. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So the, hopefully... Yeah. So, I'm, you know, so and it's going to be... It's kind of a Destiny-style, like, loot shooter... But, like, a big open world. It looks interesting. If it it's looks... Bioware, it's going to be heavy in dialogue, mm-hmm. and it's going to be a heavy RPG. Mm-hmm. And both of those are amazing. Yeah. Because uh-huh. I don't... Like, like, Destiny was an RPG, but it wasn't a heavy RPG. Yeah, It was, just, it was more mm-hmm. like an RPG, RPG shooter, light. Mm-hmm. like, yeah. RPG light. Yeah. Where if, if they take the Bioware mechanics of Dragon Age and Star Wars Knights of the Republic and, will like, married that with, like, third-person, over-the-shoulder, God of War style, like... Shooter, uh, yeah. shooter, flying in jetpack. Well, it looks like stuff. loot has a lot to do with it too, because yeah. you'll get guns that have special like you know powers and abilities, and oh, like, it just looks, looks so yeah. fun. I, yeah. so I hope they don't and mess it up. It's beautiful too. Mm-hmm. At least the demo, it's right. beautiful looking game. So, um, yeah, that's what I'm. That's my hope for E3 is that they get that game right with no stupid loot boxes, microtransaction garbage, predatory mm-hmm. practices. I mean, they've removed it all from Battlefront 2. Yeah, which is, which is and, heartening. But again, you know, it's just my trust is so low with oh, them sure. that it's yeah. like, it's like, I'm just like, you can put on a good face, but like, I, I don't, I just, I'm expecting them to sneak it in there somewhere mm-hmm. in a way that's EA garbage. is a meme now. Yeah. God of War's creator said no microtransactions and maybe no DLC. Mm-hmm. Spider Man's creator said don't worry, no loot boxes, and you will get content for DLC that is a full fledged story addition to characters and villains and etc. Like what you want. Like everyone that comes out with a new game now is lambasting EA for loot boxes. Exactly. Yeah. So and it's even just... quietly on the side, Warner Brothers games, WB Games took is taking all of the microtransactions out of Shadow of War. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like that happened too. So other companies and other developers are now responding to the negative press that, that EA, EA started. Yeah, so uh-huh. EA surely can't come out of the gate with a microtransaction loot box yeah, fiasco. Uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm with you. I'm excited to see what EA is going to do. I'm excited. I mean, I just uh, it's just like I'm I mean, I'm not going to pre-order it. I I, I think mm-hmm. I can confidently easily say that. Yeah. Like I'm just because I don't want to pre-order the game only to have them like a week from launch, you know. Oh, by the way, there's just a little bit of this stuff in there. Like, yeah. no, no, keep it all. I won't wait until the game comes out with mm-hmm. none of it. There's supposed to be it. a preview game event in March for Xbox One owners. Mm-hmm. That's I don't know if it's free or invitation or beta or what have you, but it is a it is a dis- like a early build of the game. I don't know. It might be locked behind pre-orders, but people will be playing. Yeah. So content will be shown good. on the internet. Well, that's good. It'll I, be discussed. Yeah. Feedback will be sent, and they're going to work and change things. Cool. So that's you look for that. Great. All right, anything else that you can think um, of? Darksiders 3 and Biomutant oh. Oh. from THQ Nordic. <laughs> I want to see more of those. And there was another one I was thinking of, too. Um, Nintendo just leaked the, a Star Fox possible racing game, uh, which at first I was like, interesting, and then I read it, and I saw it could be a mashup between Diddy Kong Racing and F-Zero, and I was like, yes, please. Forget, like... Star Fox, you've been marred by <laughs> by the last game because it was received right, very poorly yeah. and it didn't. I loved it. I thought it was great. I have it on the Wii U. I'll play it again anytime. But no one liked it. It flopped. It didn't sell well. And just like let's let's do something different with Star Fox for now, just to keep Fox and the Cloud relevant, sure, yeah. but not worry about a full fledged Star Fox game on the heels of a bad one. Yeah. Uh, and so this is a perfect part. Like think of Episode One, Star Wars Episode One Racer, the pod racing game for N sixty four. No one expected that to be. Like, mm-hmm. when they announced it, it was like, oh, this is a Star Wars racing game based on Episode One, which no one liked because of Jar Jar Binks. Sure, it turned sure, out to yeah. be amazing, yeah, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm hoping for. Like, I think Retro Studios, they're making it. They're incredible. They're an amazing triple quality, triple A, like, developer studio. They can make it right. Yeah. And F-Zero is amazing. They made the GameCube one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, for people who like racing games, I'm super excited for you. Yeah. It'll probably be a good one. Yeah. I, it's not something that I'm particularly piques my interest, but... That's okay. Man, there was I'm one different. other game I was thinking about that I was hoping to see more of. Final Fantasy VII Remake? Kingdom Hearts 3. <laughs> Kingdom Hearts 3. Yeah, yep, okay. that was it. Not no, Final Fantasy VII Remake? You're not I, excited about it? Um, Square Enix <laughs> got rid of all of the development work that was outsourced, and they're now making it all in-house. 
and they've apparently scrapped a lot of it. Uh, and they're starting to take it more seriously, okay, but it well, shows good. you how early that they are because they were already yeah, like yeah. in it, no position to even come close to release and now they're starting over more Ugh. and they actually have job racks out posted online right now so people like that are high they're still hiring to mm. make the game so wow, that's unfortunate it's gonna be a very long yeah. time yeah oh well I, my prediction is that's gonna be a ps5 game i don't even so it, if ps5 because, is a thing Ooh. Yeah, it <laughs> they've said it was okay well it's 20 minutes in already and we said we weren't gonna spend all time talking about E3. E3. So, let's really quickly do... Doing this podcast is our favorite thing. Doing this podcast is our favorite thing. So, Favorite Things is the name of this segment. And it's just a time for us to kind of catch you up on what our favorite thing is for the week. Yeah, it could be something from pop culture. It could be something from our lives. It could be something delicious. Um, so, our favorite things for the week. Do you have one or do you want me to start? I had one earlier. Okay, so I'll start. start. And maybe I'll drag my memory. My favorite thing is Penguin and Termite teamed up to kill two games of Can Jam. Yeah, we did. We won. Both of us got, like, single win shots. Like, so Can Jam, for those who are unfamiliar, it's a lawn game, and it's two little, like, cans that have, like, an open top and a slot. Like a trash can. Like a trash can, but with a slot. Like a frisbee-shaped slot, slot in the front. And you throw frisbees at the can and just score points. So it's kind of like a mix between cornhole and, like, frisbee golf. Yep. Um, and the, like, so, you you know, the main way you get points is either by, like, hitting it directly or, like, throwing the frisbee over it and having your partner smack it into the hole because you get mm-hmm. points. But if you throw it into the can unassisted, where it goes into the can unassisted, either through the top or through the slot, you automatically win. Your team automatically wins. Yep. Both term I, uh, I slotted it, yep. through the frisbee and slotted it. That was one game. That was one game. Then we lost a game. And then we lost a game, uh, a legit game. We lost it with scoring points regularly. And then, uh, we won again when Termite, we said we were doing a tiebreaker game. Termite threw it and it went, and I, I was looking at it and it went in. I didn't touch it and it went in the top. So we won yep. two games. It was my favorite thing because I am not an athletic person. I am not skilled at all. Um, and due to a couple of lucky shots, we got to show up our much more athletic friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, athletic is a questionable. Uh, questionable. <laughs> you know what I mean? um, my favorite thing is thunderstorms. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, it's uh, May. Going to be June when this episode launches. And we haven't had a thunderstorm in seven months. I mean, it's been a long time. Yeah. I love thunderstorms. Yeah. And there's one happening right now. It's right, happening right out now. the window. Oh, it's really cool because right now it's like the storm is blowing past, but the sun hasn't quite gone down yet. So the top of the trees over there, you can see that like there's some sunlight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like trees. That. It's cool. I like yeah. dynamic weather. Me too. Mm-hmm. Cool. That's uh, favorite things for the day. Yeah. Let's go ahead and skip what are you playing. Um, because we know you're playing God of War. And I'm not really playing anything right now because I'm still trying to nurse the novel-shaped hole in my pocket. Pocket? Heart. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. Dan, you should get some new pants because you've got, you got book-sized a... holes in your pocket. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that was weird. Let's go ahead and move into our topic today. What are we talking about in the podcast we today? We are going to talk about emulation and piracy. Emulation and piracy? What's that? This is a topic that has been brought up by many of our feedback you people who have uh talked about this idea of copying or owning your own copies of games that you didn't pay for or buy from the store so emulation is software process by which programmers are able to make one computer pretend to be an entirely different computer so it's like making your pc an nes or playing a gamecube game on your psp Mm -hmm. or whatever there's just a million different ways you can Make emulators. Emulators are the software components themselves, the executables that run, not hardware related. And piracy is, according to the Software and Information Industry Association, software piracy is defined as the unauthorized use of software. It's very broad. Yeah, it really I is. I mean, it's good. It's, yeah, it's that's the same definition for like music and movies yeah. and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, this topic came about to me personally because of the NES Classic and Super NES Classic, and around that discussion, uh, a lot of people on the internet, if you are lamenting at the how hard and difficult they were to find and how like limited the supply chain was and what you had to do to get one and procure one, but you complain on the internet about it, you would immediately be 
uh, chewed up, spit out, and ripped apart for even desiring the console. Because if you are anyone of any value, you would just make your own <laughs> Raspberry Pi computer, and you would install emulators on it, and you would go find all of the games online for free, and you would have spent a fraction of the cost of the actual stuff, and you'd have way more games and you'd be able to play it anywhere, and it's smaller, and it lasts longer, etc. Mm-hmm. So there's like all these other benefits, right? So that made me mad, because I'm seeking ways to support the actual artists and developers of the titles to get the official, like, made, quality, mm-hmm. emulated, like, video games, and they're saying, no, you just go cheat and go download and steal all these other ones. So mm-hmm. we're going to talk about um, preserving video games, like, archiving them. Yeah. And sometimes people will validate their piracy of games or emulating them by saying these are hard to find they're not made anymore we need to figure out how to archive them and keep a a log of them we're going to talk about straight up stealing them and we're going to talk about well if i don't distribute it or if i already own it i want to back up my own stuff Mm -hmm. so we're going to go into a couple different avenues here yeah real quick let's kind of back up and just sort of talk about how does how does emulation kind of play out in real like when when people are you know what do we mean by you know, emulating, downloading ROMs, Raspberry Pis, like what are these what are these things, how and how do they relate to piracy? So, you know, essentially the way it usually goes is, you know, like you said, I have one of those motivations. I want to play a game that I can't get. I want to play a game that I can't afford. I want to play a game. Um, I just want to steal a game. I don't feel like buying it. And so what people will do is they will download they'll either download or design some kind of software that allows them to trick their computer into thinking it's another system Mm -hmm. so it's a your computer basically you know you create basically an operating system that runs inside your computer that you know is a playstation operating system or Mm -hmm. a nintendo operating system Mm -hmm. and then you download so rom files are like actual like copies of games Mm -hmm. yeah and rom stands for read only memory yeah mm -hmm. so it's like the actual files the games run on right okay you can extract them from games so if i have a super nintendo game i can plug it into a device that feeds my computer. Yeah, and, and normally, files so off. normally those ROM files that you, you rip off of the cartridge or the disc, they would only be meant to, they, they you know, the way they're designed is they're only meant to be played on that system, right. on that, you know. On that hardware. On that hardware. Yep. Um, well, that's the whole point. That's where the emulator comes in. The right. emulator says, hey, I'm a NES, or hey, I'm a Super Nintendo, and then and then the ROM file's like, oh, cool, awesome, and then, and then plays, so you yep. can play it. Yeah, so that's kind of how it practically plays out in mm-hmm. real life. So we'll kind of discuss, and that's and that's why it's so closely associated with piracy because typically the way that works is you're the typically the re- way, reason you're doing that is because you're trying to well, you're pirating the software, you're right. using the software in an unauthorized way. However, it's not that quite, quite clear cut. So we'll go ahead and ask: Are there legitimate ways of emulating? Is there is there is emulation? Is there a legit form of emulation? Like, is there any emulation that's sort of officially licensed? There is yes, Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo, the big three that we talked about earlier. Yep, they all have their own way of preserving their own titles and libraries through their own emulation. So. Mm-hmm. Like Sony, for example, has this service called PlayStation Now. Yep. And with it, you can subscribe to it, pay monthly, and you have access to all the PlayStation 3 games that they allow you to have access to. Mm-hmm. Um, and some PlayStation 3s play PS2 games, the original PS3 launched, and they all all PlayStation 3s play PlayStation 1 games. So mm-hmm. they have like ways of doing that. And yeah. that's done through emulation on their systems. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sony developed So it's emulators. like in-house emulation. Right. And you know, calling it emulation in and of itself is... Potentially misleading because in a lot of ways it's just they design their, you know, they design their the PlayStation Three. I'm sure the architecture of the PlayStation Three from a software perspective is not that much different from the architecture of the PlayStation Four. Very different. Yeah. The oh, are they really? The PlayStation Three is extremely different. Well, I don't mean like operations, like menus and stuff. I mean, no, like... I mean the physical hardware is completely different. Oh, interesting. Yeah, okay. it's a seven core processor. It was very, very proprietary. Well, but when they designed the PlayStation Four, they're like, okay, well, we want to play PlayStation Three games to some way, right. shape, or form. Yeah. They did that through their PlayStation Now service. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so nothing on the PS4 that allows it, it, it to play. But other that's than just the emulator game. that is PS Now. Got it. Okay. Right. Okay. Well, then I was wrong. I thought yeah, was describing something different. So yeah, then yeah, then these are essentially just like Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo all designed their own emulators to run mm-hmm. their games. It is again one of the downsides of console games is these generational jumps. A PC you never have to worry about mm-hmm. about backwards. Well, that, that was the big deal with the PS4 and the Xbox One when they when they announced we're going to make this on the x86 architecture because mm-hmm. it's the same as the PC. Yeah. So if it runs on a PC, you can 
potentially just, just port it on over to the PS4, yeah. or Xbox One, and make it all happy and everything work. Yeah. So in the years past, each console iteration has been its own proprietary hardware that you can't find anywhere else. Mm-hmm. Like the PlayStation 3, very unique. Yeah. Uh, the early PS3s had the PlayStation 2 hardware in it. Mm-hmm. So it had the PlayStation 2 processor and boards installed in the hardware. And they, they later scrapped those for the slim models and yeah. like later on. But anyway, that's how they did it. So Microsoft, they arguably have the best backwards compatibility today. They have a, a full-blown software-based emulation system in place where you can put an Xbox 360 disc into your current console and it will download the files off the internet that it needs to play. Mm-hmm. And the disc is kind of the DRM, digital rights management, that proves you own it. Uh, and they're even taking original Xbox games, like all the way back from 2000. 2001, 2002, and and bringing those forward as well. And that's all completely software that Microsoft has developed in-house and deployed it on their systems. Nothing streamed over the internet, nothing weird. It's just like, you put in this disc, it downloads the files on the internet, and you, you're away you go. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, Nintendo has their virtual console service, the thing that's being yeah. done away with. They just announced <laughs> that this week. That they're, they're, that's gone. No more virtual console, and there's going to be a paid subscription with the Nintendo Switch. You'll have access to 20 or so games, like the Netflix service. So mm-hmm. that's their backwards compatibility. It's like each of the systems... And then you have the classic systems, right? Super Nintendo Classic yeah. and the and NES Classic. Yeah, which are just emulators in a fancy box. <laughs> right. They're just like, yeah. That's, that's that's why everyone on the internet says, just go buy a Raspberry Pi. A Raspberry mm-hmm. Pi is like a, a just a little computer. It's a little microprocessor yeah. that you can install any operating system on. Mm-hmm. Most, most people use Linux because it's lightweight yeah. and you don't need a lot of RAM. So you could take that and load your, your ROMs on. So anyway, that's the legitimate way of emulation. Each of those companies that own the rights to them own the rights to their own games. Yes, and, not and Raspberry Pi, just to be clear. Correct, yeah. Raspberry <laughs> Pi is not... It was just the last thing you mentioned Sorry, that yeah. you're like, that's the legitimate. No, right. no. Yeah, no, it's the, the, the classic systems, NES, SNES, classic editions. Yep. Those are officially licensed emulators, essentially, and then all of the software available on... The actual current gen consoles. Yep, mm-hmm. in all of yeah. their stores, mm-hmm. you can get it all. Yep, mm-hmm. cool. So, okay, now since we sort of talked about what's official and what is allowed, you know, it, we would be doing we wouldn't be doing the topic of emulation justice if we didn't actually talk about the you know the ones that are the good emulators. Yeah, let's talk about emulation's most practical application, which is stealing yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or piracy, as we as we call it. I, I am curious and. We didn't do research on this, but I would be curious as to see, like, why we use the word piracy for soft, like, specifically with software, oh, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, but you do it with movies and music. Yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah, but it's movies and software. Movies. Yeah. It's still software. It so is. I'm wondering, like, wh- why that term was chosen for it. It's yeah. probably just, it maybe it was something that was used Could for a while. Could have been dated all the way back to cassette players and, mm-hmm. like, eight track tapes. Right, or... but, like, piracy, you know, piracy has been a legal term for a long time, long, yeah. long time, uh-huh. but the piracy <laughs> way back in the 1800s was way different than yeah. the piracy now and in fact you know that piracy like actual high seas stealing off of ships like that actually still does happen too so like there's two forms of piracy yeah, in the modern like, what you kind know? are you talking about yeah, yeah exactly i just it's it would, it would be interesting i would be i'm a nerd so i'm mm-hmm. interested in like stupid things like that like why do they choose the word piracy yeah, for software? That's interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, but we didn't actually do research on it, so we can't tell Not you. Not that part anymore. So, well, oh, yeah. No, we did do research. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, do you want to talk about, let's talk about um, some of this legal stuff then. Yep. So there's a guy named Derek E. Baumbauer. Uh, we have an article who he was talking to. Uh, we'll link off the article in the sub notes. Uh, he teaches internet law and intellectual property at the University of Arizona's College of Law. Uh, and he did discover that there's no definitive answer that truly exists to that have been tested in court. There's no mm. like law or case you can refer back to, like Roe v. Wade, or mm. like you know, like those things that are in place that are law that you can reference. This has never been like a big deal, mm-hmm. and not comparing video games to Roe v. Wade. That's a <laughs> sorry. I was just the first thing I thought of when you like, refer like it's, I don't know what the word the legal word for like referring to a previous sure sure yeah law no, like or a, like a previous ruling yeah. as a law. There's a word for it. I just don't know what that is. Yeah. yeah. So sorry. <laughs> um. So we talked about what ROMs are, and those are the game files, right? They're, the ROMs are always an unauthorized copy of a video game that's protected by copyright, the files themselves. In the United States, copyrights protect work for 75 years, so there's no major console title that will be public domain for decades. Uh, downloading a copy of a game you don't own is not legal. 
It's no different from downloading a movie or TV show that you don't own. Um, so there are some situations that people run into where they feel justified or maybe there's some legal gray area about about these things. And one of those is you already own a physical copy of the game. So you think about, I want to play Mario World on my cell phone. I currently own Super Mario World on my actual Super Nintendo sitting at home on my shelf. I, I have one. So this is just my own personal copy, right? Is that... Is that going to be a problem? Um, so this guy who studied law, he responded about how uh, it could be defensible in court if it got that far. If, if someone like if Nintendo came after you for playing Mario World on your phone and you procured a Super Nintendo and a copy of Mario World in court, if it ever got that mm-hmm. far, maybe you would have some argument. It's not a sound definitive argument by any means. But again, it hasn't actually happened. And mm-hmm. that, that situation might fall under fair use. Might, but it's, might. it's like, do you really want to be the person to test that? Like, yeah. I mean, I don't know what kind of lawyers you guys have, but yeah, the closest thing I have to a lawyer is a really good friend of mine who is a lawyer, but like he's that's like family law, and so I would not necessarily want him to represent me in this kind of court case because that's not his specialty of mm-hmm. law. So it's like, ugh, ugh, I couldn't afford a lawyer for you know to <laughs> to yeah. do that. So it's really just like a and then yeah, I think you're gonna say follow that up with like as soon as you distribute that. So if you take a copy of uh, oh, yeah, you make a copy of a game and say, well, I'm only going to use it for myself because but I but I purchased the game so I have a right to those files. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, that's the under fair use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which exactly. is like where the idea of fair use is you can take a piece of develop or copyrighted content and and like talk about it, parody it, criticize it. That's pretty much what we do about yeah. video games all the time. We mm-hmm. don't own the rights to any of the games we talk about. Yeah. We add our own critique to it. And we have to be very careful with our own music yeah. that we mm-hmm. throw in here too because there's copyright issues with that. But right. there is a fair use like idea umbrella that you might be able to use in court to defend yourself again with your own like physical stuff in in your hand. Like, yeah. hey, I own this already. But if you distribute it, if you're you done. give it to yeah, someone, yeah, you sell it to someone, yep, that's it. You're done. Yeah. You're, like, the Rob's law will is, crush you. Yeah. The, uh, the RIAA and the MPAA go after distributor websites for music piracy and share sites. Well, those those share sites get shut down for yeah. ROMs all the time. They oh go gosh, R I M P A A is the one I always hear about. Like yeah. M P A A is like, and if you notice, they don't scary. They don't go after the people making the copies. They only go after the people distributing them. Mm-hmm, yeah, so, like, Pirate Bay is you know the renowned like, yep. peer-to-peer mm-hmm. sharing website yep. for everything. So that uh, one of the other arguments is the game's not available in the market. Nobody is losing any money, mm-hmm. right? So right. I'm not doing anything wrong. What's an example of that? Um, so like. I want to say an English translated version of Mother 2. Okay. And you can correct me if I'm wrong, but the Mother series is what Earthbound is. Yeah, so yeah. Earthbound is Mother 3 on Super Nintendo. Okay. There was two other previous ones. Uh, Mother 1 came to the United States legally and translated into something, some Game Boy cut, like thing. I haven't played it. But Mother 2 apparently is the one of the three games that has never come to North America. So you ha- so fans have like gone and grabbed the Japanese ROM and translated it. Mm-hmm. That's that's all illegal. But people are trying to justify that yeah. because the Nintendo has yet to ever publish it in the United States and they feel obligated or entitled. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sorry, not obligated. They feel entitled to, to the rights to be able to play it. Right. Mm-hmm. And so that that's not okay either. Yeah, I mean... I mean, I know it sucks. Like yeah. that's the bottom line is like like really from like a business point of view, Nintendo should just do it. Like yeah, like make money on it. it. Yeah, make money on it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's what's crazy to me about like some of these developers is they don't really they don't really have a good reason not to other than it's ours and we're not gonna do it. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, you wrote down or, or the um Mr. Bomb Bauer the used the great metaphor of Disney's vault. Yeah. And kind of vaulting and like saying, okay, we're not gonna, we're gonna put these in the vault and we're not gonna distribute them like for a while to, you know, what is that for? To like make it special when it does come out. So like there may be business mentality behind that, mm-hmm. but like from a consumer point of view, it's like, it's just weird. We're so used to like, I, I wanna buy this, I'm gonna go to Best Buy and I'm gonna buy it, or I'm gonna go to a store, mm-hmm. I'm gonna buy it, you know, like I'm gonna find it on Amazon, you know, mm-hmm. so it's just weird. It is weird from like a consumer point of view, like, this just seems like printing money, you know? I can't imagine it would be a hugely cost, like, costly thing for them to translate Mother 3 Mm. and put it out for... Two, sorry. (laughs) Mother 2, uh, and and put it out, uh, release it for... Everything. uh, Anything, anything. And that's the other thing, too. So, you know, when talking about, you know, kind of the way I, you know, kind of processing and verbal processing here, maybe, but, like, I want... I I can understand the, like, 
heart behind like the desire to pirate i you know i will i will definitively say i think pirating is is wrong it's it's against the law it's essentially criminal behavior like you shouldn't Mm -hmm. do it um but i can also kind of sympathize and say like yeah publishers sometimes are just stupid Mm -hmm. (laughs) like why not release a a essentially a nintendo licensed emulator for your phone to be able to play a huge library of games they could yeah. make so much money yeah. off of that yep. like i would love make it a subscription service like I would, netflix yeah, exactly Done. i would love to Shut play up and take my money yeah exactly yeah. i would love to play a library of nes games on mm-hmm. my phone you know cuz like as like as prolific as mobile gaming is like there's mm-hmm. a huge just like overwhelming amount of retro titles that you just can't play anywhere else unless you have the hardware yep. um or you emulate Right. And like I, you know, so, you know, people I know from in a context, I will not say uh, because I don't want to out them on uh, our pu- public podcast. But, uh, you know, I know some people who have a Raspberry Pi mm-hmm. and I've played play the, the, the fruits of that. And they've gotten it working. You know, I work in an IT company, so I'm associate with people who are Pirates. smart, yeah. <laughs> smart and intelligent people who know how to work a computer. So they do all the hard work. Yep. And I have uh, I have played uh raspberry pi games before and it's so much fun to go back and play a lot of those old titles i'm like i haven't thought about that in years like battletoads let's do it like it's great and it's just it's weird to me that like there is clearly a desire there there is clearly a large amount of nostalgia that these developers could cash in on Mm -hmm. Uh, microsoft has the right idea with their making backwards compatibility for their original xbox titles like and that like that's been extremely like well received by uh-huh. by it's the awesome. uh, Microsoft fans yes. and just gaming fans in general. Yep. Like how much more prolific is Nintendo's backlog of games? Uh-huh. They've got like so uh, Microsoft's only got three generations. Mm-hmm. Nintendo has something like six generations worth of console games to pull from. Seven seven, con- seven generations of consoles. Mm-hmm. All with like and that's a large not library. Handhelds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah handheld yeah. Game Boy DS. Yeah. There's just so much, and people don't. You know, I don't want to go buy a Game Boy to play my old Game Boy games. Mm-hmm. You know, like, that's I was about to say. And it's yeah. a good segue. Mm-hmm. It's like say you want to play Battletoads and mm-hmm. you want to do it legally. You come to me, hey Danny, I want to play Battletoads. What oh, do I? Legal. What do yeah. I got to do? What do I got to do? First, you have to go on eBay and find an NES, <sighs> and then you have to find one that works. And if it doesn't work, you got to find the parts to fix it. So <laughs> now you have to know how to take apart an NES and not break it, mm-hmm. and clean the 72 pin connector and so- not solder. But clip a new one on. That's the first step. Now you have an NES that works. Now you got to go find a copy of Battletoads. Yep. And it's worth like a hundred or hundred twenty dollars. Mm-hmm. So you've already spent sixty to seventy on the console, and now you have to spend another hundred on the game itself. Yeah. So now you're up to like you might as well say two hundred dollars by the time you're all said and done rounding <sighs> up just to play one game. Right. Yeah. Legally, and yeah. Nintendo doesn't see a dime of that money because you bought everything yeah. secondhand. Yeah. And that's that's my next point. Is like people will argue the legitimacy of piracy because if you buy it used, they don't see the money anyway. anyways. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's not the point. Yeah. Right. Right. And you're yeah. still stealing it. Uh, buying it secondhand is within that fair use. Like yeah. being able to distribute your own. Exactly. You can sell whatever yeah. you want mm-hmm. at a yard sale. Um, but going back to like Disney's The Vault kind of argument is Battletoads has potential value. At yeah. any point, yeah. it was developed by Tradewinds, published by Konami, I believe. I might be wrong. They could fire up the license again. They still own the rights to it. Doesn't matter who owns, who developed it. Those people are probably completely dispersed mm-hmm. into the world. Yeah. But at any point, if they see that value and it's worth it, they could fire it up and release a port or something legal, yep. and then that is the money. That's like their investment in the intellectual property. Right. That's their IP. Exactly. Yeah, and that, that segues me nicely into my next point is yeah. like at the end of the day, like we're talking about intellectual property here, mm-hmm. and and intellectual property is a conversation that's really hits close to home for me because as a s- aspiring artist, you know, I I'm hoping someday that I can publish my novel, and if I do, like that intellectual property is the value that I have. You know, like I'm, mm-hmm. I'm talking about, I'm not talking about like value as a human being. I'm talking about legitimate money value. Is like that is dollars and cents that go into my pocket. I would be furious if a bunch of like someone ripped off my text and you know distributed it online for free, and then that's all money out of my pocket. Mm-hmm. Like. Like, I know it's tempting to sit there and be like, oh, these game developers just want another gold plate on their, on their, you know, uh, jets. But A, that's not realistic because most of (laughs) these giant developers have, you know, are not making that much money. You know, you you often hear that Mm -hmm. argument more with like music and and movies. And that's a little bit more fair, but it still doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how much money someone's making off intellectual property. 
if they're making a lot of money off of that intellectual property, it's their hard work and they deserve every penny, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, because it wouldn't exist without them. So you just have to keep that in mind. I know that it's like, for anyone who's listen, listening here who, who does pirate, it's like, we would encourage you to try to find legal ways to, yeah. to get your games only because like that intellectual property is someone, it belongs to someone else. And if you're stealing it, just think about how mad you would be if someone stole something you made, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like your because every single idea that you have is potential for if you put in the hard work every single idea you have has the potential to be rags to riches you know what i mean like that's the american dream isn't it like i know that 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 idea gets kind of muddled up in a lot of rhetoric these days but at the end of the day that like that's what that's what kind of makes our western society great is like anyone from anywhere can have an idea and if they put in the hard work and maybe a little bit of luck like Boom. Yeah. You can make it. You can make a living off of a single idea. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine how frustrated you'd be if someone stole your idea right. and just gave it away to people for free? Like yep. that's at the end of the day what we're talking about here when we talk mm-hmm. about intellectual property. Yeah. It's like it, it literally is stealing the potential of something, mm-hmm. which is yeah. hard to kind of define because you're not yeah. like walking into a store and grabbing a candy bar. Right. You, you can't mm-hmm. touch it. Yeah. yeah. It's like this intangible thing, this amorphic, ever-changing, ever-flowing, like – supply and demand value that no one can really see mm-hmm. like how valuable is mega man mm-hmm. yeah. like the, the franchise like ask capcom how much money they could potentially right, make off right. mega man they don't even know because yeah. it's still potential mm-hmm. so yeah. like downloading that pirated copy or that one japanese version of this like you're taking away someone's potential to fire that up and make right. it uh, make money on it yeah and we've talked like we've had several episodes where we've talked about you know we talked about video game pricing and why games are priced the way they are we've talked a lot about you know the merits of downloadable content and microtransactions and all that stuff mm-hmm. and at the end of the day like honestly the best thing you can do if you hate microtransactions in games then pay the full price like, at the end of the day, it's yeah. like, like if you want developers to make better games, you at least owe them. You at least owe them that base mm-hmm. value of the game. You know what I mean? Like, and if they put it on sale, that's great. That's mm-hmm. still officially, like, you know what I mean? Like, if you can find a deal on it, awesome. But give the developers their due so that they can afford to make, think about all the great game developers. You, same people who, you know, I imagine the same people who pirate games also lament when a development studio gets shut down. I would imagine. What yeah. level of hypocrisy is that? Like, yeah, you can yeah. directly contribute it. If you... De- pirate a game from any developer you directly contributed to the downfall of that developer mm-hmm. because like oh it's crazy there's yeah. so many um so many dollars lost but you know again like i don't want to just beat up on pirates we get it like if we can take some time to beat up on nintendo like as i think nintendo in my mind is the ones who are the most short-sighted in regards yeah, to their and they're hanging that dangling carrot in front of us yeah like, clamoring that... and everyone is outwardly yelling at them from yeah, mother two that... and they're not listening <laughs> and in fact I'm... they ask reggie directly at conventions and he's just like we have no comment right now. We're like, come on, come what are you on. doing? Yeah, I mean, it's just. I mean, you were saying that, that you know a couple of minutes ago. You were saying like the monetary potential, that potential value. Yeah. Like the Nintendo has so much potential value in the amount of yeah. games that they could just they could. I mean, and they've been doing it to some degree, but I, I, even the NES and the SNES Classic just mm-hmm. they just feel like the tip of the iceberg, and they could. Do, it, it's so it's great to hear that I'll be able to play classic games on my Switch, but. 20 titles that rotate for the entire year for that's how it's gonna start service. it could be growing and, and that's great you know but that's what yeah. I mean is like it's just it's all so wimpy right now like yeah. like Nintendo it doesn't seem like Nintendo is going for the gold you know like going right. for like in a time where honestly they should like they have such a leg up on PlayStation and Sony in that regard their retro mm-hmm. gaming library is at least two generations larger than the mm-hmm. PlayStation than Sony's yeah. and like three or four generations mm-hmm. longer than Microsoft like that's so much potential so nintendo if you ever listen like if you're listening like we we can speak for ourselves but i think we can speak for a lot of you know the fact that there's so much piracy out there says there is a demand yep. for something like that so mm. like do it go <laughs> do it do it yes and i'm gonna echo that with sony make every disc because everything oh my has gosh it's, it's a slot yeah, like, it, there's no proprietary disc shape. Yeah. There's no cartridges you have to swap in. And, out and all of theirs like, are the same shape. I should yeah. go get anything that says PlayStation on it from yes. any age, from 1995, yeah. 1996 to today, and throw that disc into my PS4, and it works. And it works. Yeah, I don't care how you do it. 
If yeah. you have to stream it from the internet or install an emulator or well, put some chips you, on the board, I don't care. You, I mean, and maybe like, maybe it doesn't happen with the PS4, but make it happen with the PS5. Yes. Please make it happen. With it. They could make so much money if they make say, it. you know what, this is the this not maybe not the end all be all, but this is like this is the the granddaddy of the PlayStation systems. Like we want you to go go fish yep. out your old PlayStation One yeah. discs because this has play. PlayStation, it'll mm-hmm. play. Yep. like that'd be so ah, awesome. Yeah, that, yeah, there you go. Yeah. It should work for Sony. That's such a good tagline. Yes, if it says PlayStation to play, that's yeah. great. Um, so yeah, we're steal now, that now from we're Sony. now we're beating up on the developers. This is mm-hmm. good. So like, we don't want to just beat up on the people. If you're pirating games, just look at why you're doing it. Check your motivations. Mm-hmm. I understand. I can relate to all of them. Yeah. Uh, minus this just stealing aspect, or right, the one right. that says I'm too cheap to buy anything. But like <laughs> for the guy who really wants to play something like Battletoads or experience this really awesome you know, retro experience that was definitive in the gaming industry, and you're trying to learn, or like you're new to gaming, and you know that this one title that you just can't seem to get is so expensive, and you really want to play. It and so you're urged like i get it i'm yeah. right there with you i used to pirate stuff way back in the day calling mm-hmm. myself out i had a whole disc of game boy advance games super nintendo games and i would carry them around the various computers at school i even. haven't really I done with busted, games like, but i will say that i have i have at least benefited from the fruits of pirating because yeah. i watched seasons one through three or four of game of thrones pirated oh, so there you go yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and we share uh accounts i won't but sway. that's fine HBO wants you to do that. Oh. They said that they're happy with All you right. guys. Sharing. As long as that's okay. Mm-hmm. But yeah. So there's still. So like... that's a bit, and that's a business strategy. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So let I'm about okay to get that. a taste. <laughs> yes. Let the first one's free. Then you got to pay for it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. Sorry. We we probably did sound like we were beating up on the the pirates themselves a lot. Right. Which... But we do also want to say like we get it. We understand. Yeah. But like be better. <laughs> like yeah. it's still it's still wrong. And even though yes, the developers should be doing more they're not right now and you kind of just have to live with that you mm-hmm. know it's like it's a, at the end of the day like you know we you know our official stance on pirating is don't do it please stop we love you <laughs> yep. yep that's right where we are yep so yep. cool well uh yeah please uh engage in the discussion with us what are you guys thoughts on piracy piracy pirating have you know feel free to let us know if you don't want to say in a public forum and you want us to talk about it you know to us directly and you're welcome to send us a uh email at 80 bit smash at gmail.com um or send us a private message on facebook i don't know can you do private messaging on reddit i don't know whatever like if you want to talk about your pirating piracing mm-hmm. piracing experiences then yep we're happy to listen um and have that conversation with you but otherwise let us know what your general thoughts on piracy and emulation are um, emulation is a super interesting topic just from a technical standpoint so we love to talk about that you know mm-hmm. what what software is out there what software how how well how well does it work uh how well does it uh not work in your experiences have you ever had any crazy funny or interesting experiences with emulation software emulation mm-hmm. so um yeah uh what and what do you think the developers what other avenues do you think developers could pursue too. Here's an example to get your appetite wet. Yeah, wet, your, wet us. Wet the whistle. CD Projekt Red in its very early days of PC game making. Mm-hmm. Uh, PC games were pirated way more than anything yeah. ever before Nintendo. And they came out with a, a idea that was to prevent people from pirating. Make it come with a bunch of cool stuff that people want to buy. So like, it's not mm. just the game that you get, but you get a bath and a book and some lore <laughs> and like a t-shirt and some stickers and like all this other stuff. And so like, it kind of drove you to want to buy it because yeah. you get your you get more for your money. Mm-hmm. You get all this cool stuff. But anyway, that was like an idea that happened as a result of piracy. Yeah. way way back in the day. Before awesome. Technological. Uh, there's there's a whole bunch of actually there's a uh, I'll try to find a cracked article and add it to the list of footnotes. There's a really great cracked article that has a list of like all these different things that developers have done to, like, screw people who've pirated the game. Yeah. Like, that, like they made, I think it was, is it Mirror's Edge, the game where you, like, do all that parkour? Uh-huh. Um, uh, I think Mirror's Edge, the first one, if you pirated the copy, there's, like, code that kicks in that, like, your character can't jump very far at all. Oh, so you hilarious. keep, like, falling off of, like, buildings. And so you that's go, like, awesome. run, and then you, like, trip and fall off of buildings and stuff like that. Publ- so- published by EA. Oh, so there's a. I'll see if I can find that list because it's a really funny article. It's all these things that developers did to screw over pirates. Yeah. So, um, pretty funny. Anyways, uh, yeah. So just in- conversate with us. We want to hear your thoughts on this topic. So, uh, right. we will once again just sort of reiterate where you can find us. We're at 80 Bit Pod Smash and pretty much all the major social medias. Mm-hmm. If we are not on the social media of your choice, let us know. We will try to make it happen. And we're on 80bitpodsmash.com. That's our landing yeah. page. Mm-hmm. Everything about us is there. Who we are. Links to iTunes and Google Play. You can find us there. So. Yeah, yeah. If you don't have like, if you don't have an easy way to listen to our podcast, 
that's probably the easiest way. You can stream yeah. them right from the website, so right from your browser. So yep. cool. All right. E3. E3 is coming, and we're going to talk about it. So join us next week. Join us next week and this weekend. And uh, yeah, have a great time, y'all. Bye.